You're listening to The Thinking Effect, special edition, Clipping Confidence, talking about my current project that's going to be released, a mixtape, One More in the Clip. So, Tommy, One More in the Clip is your 14th mixtape. What was the inspiration behind this project? The this people, time? the people. One More in the Clip mixtape, I record every day. I call it bar practice when I'm just freestyling the different beats and I have a, uh, a crew of people that rock with me on Instagram and I'll just throw the clips into that particular private channel and ask people for feedback and I'll say, should I keep this or should I dump it? Should I add it to the mixtape? And the ones that they say add it to the mixtape is strictly for the people. When I dropped a Tribe Called Danger, it was also um, an appreciation to the people that show support. If they say like, yo, I think you would sound dope over X, I just believe in delivering what the people want. Okay, well, the second part of that question is, how does it reflect where you are in your career and in your life right now? Like a lot of times, to be honest with you, I gotta be wanting to stop doing music. Um, I remember when we went to shoot the video for Family First. Shout out to Noah Kim for Life. And uh, in Ocho. But that day, like, I just felt like, man, I've been doing this for a long time. I invest a lot of money into it. And sometimes when you have expectation on where you think things should be, it can lead to disappointment. So like, I just feel like enough is enough, you know, 13 mixtapes. I don't know, uh, a bunch of singles, uh, three LPs. I just felt tired at the moment. But at the same time, when the people are saying, yo, you should, this is what we want. And it's like, I'm digging deep down inside to let you know, like, yo, I got one more shot. I got to give it, I got to give it just a little bit more because this is what the people are asking for. And there you have it. One more in the clip. So the mixtape features 14 tracks, a classic freestyle from unreleased music. How do you choose the tracks and what do they represent in terms of your journey as an artist? Gotcha. So the tracks are primarily boom bap beeps, some from the 90s, 2000s, and then current producers that I work with. And again, listening to the people, they like the way I sound over boom bap beats. I think because growing up, that was in my heart. That's what I enjoyed the most. And I think that to the listeners, they can hear the passion in my voice when I do that. So, you know, I probably have at least 30, 40 different freestyles and songs that I've compiled together. And it's just dropping them out to the crowd and seeing which ones they rock with, I get a good response from and which ones I don't. And for the most part, the ones that they enjoy are the ones that I'm going to use. And then I just may have my favorites, like I really like this one, that I'm just going to share. So you said the theme of the mixtape is all about having a little more to give. Can you talk about a specific time in your career when you felt like you had nothing left? but then manage to push through? I think there's always those moments when I say to myself, like, all right, enough. And then, like, the universe will just send me a gift. It may be a song taken off. It may be a relationship, like meeting with Ilmine, which led to me meeting with Dom to us creating these amazing records. And it's sort of like 
nah, you can't tap out yet because there's more for you to learn. And like someone told me one time, it's like when my bucket is full based on all the things that I've learned in my journey, it's my responsibility to pour back into people. So I have this young producer by the name of um, Ja out of uh, PA, really, really dope, you know, and I just feel like it's my duty to pour into him to light the fire to his dream so he could keep going. I can't keep the fire going, but I can give it a spark, right? Based on what I've learned. And yeah, it's, it's, it's seeing that what I love impacts other people. So from there, that's what I do. is being released on NFT keychain. That's a unique that's a unique innovative approach. What made you choose this format? Um a couple reasons. One of the reasons that I chose this format is because I didn't want to face um takedown notices because I'm using industry beats. Things are not cleared. Um and I wanted it to be something that's exclusive. So it's not going to be something that's readily available to the masses. It's going to be a very limited quantity that'll be released for those who are interested. And it's a, it's a keepsake. Um, so when you get the, the NFC, it'll link to a particular website. And then I can continually add updates to that keychain or that link so that there's always like a surprise or like people say, there's always an Easter egg somewhere. It's, it's something where people can look forward to some extra stuff that's not even listed, whether it's behind the scenes, whether it's um, an invite to a, a virtual meetup, whether it's an invite to an in-person meetup, like everything will be communicated directly to those people who have shown interest in connecting directly with me. And it's not like, a shotgun approach to where I'm putting it out there and maybe people want to listen to it by, you know, chance. This is like, nah, if you hit me, this is what you're looking for. So. Okay. So, so one more in the clip has a raw boom bat sound. How do you say it? He said true? boom bat. <laughs> boom bat. Yeah, yeah. Boom bat sound. Right. How do you balance staying true to the classic sound and still pushing your feet? Um, I remember one time I was talking to Dom, and it's another producer we work with, and another artist. And in their sound, it sounds current. And I was like, yo, to Dom, I was like, yo, like, I want to make a record like that. And he was like, for what? Just like that. It was like, for what? And I say that to say, if my voice resonates with the boom bap genre, because that's what it is. It's not a time period. It, it's a it, it's a style of music. Why would I worry about trying to do something that sounds like another genre just because more people listen to it? And I think that's where expectation comes in. It's sort of like at that time I wanted that quick reward that quick reward to say like, oh, I could do this and I could fit in this space when I'm not meant for that space. I meant like I master this space, right? So that's why I, I stay true to it. It's so important that you said that it's a sound, right? And not so much a time period. It's not a time period. You know what I mean? Because people always associate it with a time period saying, Oh, that's old school and it's not, it's just it's a not. sound. It's a sound. Okay, so you've been training for the Ironman, which requires incredible discipline and right. mental toughness. Yeah. How does that experience influence your music? The, the discipline of being physical carries over into the discipline of being creative. Once you get a discipline, which is basically a habit that you can do whether or not you're motivated, it doesn't matter. You, you do it because this is what you need to do. I treat my creativity the same way. 
I do it whether or not I feel like it. Are there times when I have a beat and it's just bringing something out of me creatively and I'm like want to run to my space and do something? Absolutely. Are there days when I don't really have much and I can just go into that space and study? Absolutely. But for the overall journey of being, I want to say artist, the dreamer, right? I'm still working toward that dream. When I'm working out and I'm working out toward the Iron Man, I know that it's a certain distance that I'm training for. So regardless of if I feel like it in the morning, I do my my routine. If I feel like it in the evening, I do my routine. And I just think that, you know, I learned something recently that said, and I think um, the artist Russ said it, it's like discipline is the greatest form of self-love because you you are committing to yourself the things that you feel as if will make you a better person. And I love me very much. Confidence and resilience are key themes in your work. What advice would you give someone struggling to find that one more within themselves? Um, what is could, the career, personal yeah, life? Yeah, yeah. I think that I could be cliche and just say don't give a fuck. But I think it is more about being brave enough to experiment you know you don't have to put yourself into a box because the things that you see sound and feel a particular way you can go and check out something else that's just totally different and think about how that makes you feel and what type of joy it brings to you and if that does it for you then that's the thing you should rock with and when you experiment like experiment with the intention of not expecting anything you're just going through the experience you don't know what it's going to be but you're just in that discovery phase of checking it out and trying it and then you'll know whether or not you like it or you don't right. okay. so looking ahead what's next for one man what's after one morning clip after one more in the clip, um, we are going to do a couple cool things. We're going to do some live events. Uh, I think we're going to do the, not a treasure hunt. What is it called? The hunt where you like hide, you know, scavenger. we're going to do a scavenger hunt. Thank you. We're going to do a limited edition for merchandise. Um, preferably high end. Um, we're going to do um, a master class for those who would want to be coached directly by me, one on one. Very, very limited slots, like maybe at most like three people. And after the mixtape, you know, I'm going to work on an EP that's coming out. You know what I'm saying? So that's going straight into 2025. And I just want to thank everybody who has liked, commented, shared, even skipped past the stuff that I've created because of, at least you've seen it, right? And I think that as dreamers, more than anything, we just want to be um, recognized. So I thank you for your recognition. I thank you for... Um, trusting me um yeah and i'm um, just going to continue to make dope shit and thank you wait 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 before you stop i want to thank you harlem grace shot by grace grace brown i want to thank you for holding me down for all these years for doing what you do um for never looking at me and calling me crazy or foolish because I love art. You know how I live art. I don't just I don't just do rap. Like I'm, you know, we're in we're at museums. We are in clothing stores. We're in 
rest, like we look at everything as a form of expression and um, as we continue to evolve and we grow our brands, we want to bring that same feeling to people who connect with us, like how the, the, the scope of art can just be your style that you expand to anything that, that we touch. So 